So I went for an interview today and I was looking to become a lounge server in a bar tub, <laughs> bar tub, a bar pub slash, oh my god. Hey! So I went for an interview today and I was looking to become a server in like a lounge atmosphere. Anyway, um, I haven't changed yet, but I decided that maybe it would be a good idea to share with you guys what I wore to the interview. Um, and I just wanted to give you a few tips that I like to use because I've gone to like 20 interviews in the last little bit. It's always fun. Anyway, this blazer I actually got at Value Village and it's pretty snazzy. Not gonna lie. Now I got this skirt at H&M and it's got a little bit of gold in it, which I like. Adds a bit of spunk. Um, and I'm just wearing a nice comfortable pair of leggings and a nice little heel. Most places out here I find I'm in Alberta right now and they want you to wear at least a two inch, inch and a half heel to work and it has to be polishable leather. So I find wedges work best, uh, comfort wise. There's a few things you want to bring to your interview, or I want to bring anyway. Um, if they want you to come back for a second interview, bring an extra resume. Um, make sure your resume looks good. See, I have it all set up so that it looks neat. You can throw in a few. My friend actually made my resume. <laughs> and she added. And not too long. You want everything to stand out right away because they're probably not going to be looking at it for too long. Um, if you have volunteer experience, that's really good. You want that to stand out. I don't because I'm not very helpful. Put the name of the place that you're applying to in the objective. So instead of saying to obtain other full or part-time employment, you would say, this is what I wrote on one of them. To join the team of food service professionals at wherever you're applying, creating memorable experiences while maintaining a professional and exciting environment. It's important to have your pro serve, or it, the name varies from province to province, but you can actually transfer them so that, uh, like I got mine in Vancouver and then we moved here, so then I had to transfer it, but it's just a matter of going online and then they'll just mail it to you. So that's always good to bring with you. Always bring two pens. One for you, one for the person who's interviewing you, in case they need one. Heart chakra stone. Before you go to the interview, you want to make sure that you are very presentable. So you don't want to off-put the person um, by any means. So it's always good to use mouthwash. Also, when it comes to smelling good, this is my favorite stuff. You don't want to overwhelm people, and there's people out there who um, have allergies and just can't handle and asthma and everything. So um, you just want to put a little bit, I like to put a little bit on the ends of my hair, so then when you're whipping it around, it's kind of, you get that little subtle scent of it. Um, somebody told me that musk actually has pheromones in it that attract people the same way animals are attracted to each other. I like to be sneaky with that sometimes. So hair wise, I I just, um, oh fuck, what did I do? I don't even really try to dry my hair with a towel because I find it is damaging. So I'll just uh, use the towel as little as possible just so I'm not dripping all over the place. And um, yeah, you just kind of let it air dry enough and then whenever it's still a little bit half wet, I'm so sick of having to do my roots and I found this stuff, actually my sister told me about this stuff and it is awesome. You just put, you pull your hair up into little sections, see I really need to, 
But this, these, I'm telling you, these were black before. And you just spray a bit on, just in different sections. And you just kind of comb it through and blow dry it at the same time. You gotta make sure it's really hot though because it's heat activated. But it also protects your hair from the heat. So, great stuff. Well, I'll let you in on a secret. I went to this terrible hair salon and I told them to just get rid of my roots by adding highlights, but instead they just made it orange all over from here down to here. <laughs> and uh, that sucked, but anyway, it's getting a lot better because of that stuff. I like to use this coconut oil formula on the ends of my hair, so just like little bit in your hands, just kind of rustle around the the ends of your hair, and keep blow drying, and you should be good to go. At an interview you want to look alert, you want to be alert mainly, but um, in order to look the part, if you're not completely alert, just roll it on under your eyes, pat it in, um, and it should get rid of those dark circles under your eyes. I'm going to show you what I do with my lips. Um, it's better to... It's probably better to have a tone that is just a shade or two darker than your natural one, but um, I didn't do that. So you just want to leave out the top middle part, just right in the center of your lip, because it gives the illusion of a fuller lip. After that, because it's a little bit overwhelming with the red, I like to go over it with a lighter pink. So it kind of balances it out there, but then it's a little bit too light, so <laughs> I use a dark gloss over it. And this one actually has, or it's supposed to have collagen in it. I actually find it works. I don't know if it's just a placebo effect or what, but um, yeah, I feel like my lips are a lot bigger after I put it on. I forgot to mention, if you have dry lips, this is the best. Um, moving on. If you have any skin imperfections you're trying to cover up before your interview, um, I would recommend applying this first and then actually I used to do that and then try to put powder over top but I find that it rubs off more of a a liquid foundation or like a paste I don't know if that's what you would call it um, then I find it stays on better um, after you have the wetness of the clean and clear and mixed with the kind of clay texture of uh, uh, that. I like to put this stuff on my eye. Um, I just try to make it as thin of a line as possible and it's fun if you add a little bit of a wing to it. It's good to have it as thin as possible but then if you go up just a little bit over your pupil, like right over top of it, makes your eyes look bigger. Just a nice light brown, nice ashy color would be good enough. Um, and if you have really light eyebrows, you can just kind of go over them, give them a little bit more definition. This is the toothpaste I like to use. So again, making sure you're alert for your interview is a must. So um, use these. I like to have a glass of green tea um, like an hour before I do anything. It's always good mixed with honey and lemon. Just kidding. Have a list in your mind of things to say whenever they ask what, uh, the one that always gets me is what can you do for us or what can, why can't we live without you or whatever they ask, but um, yeah, it's good to 
be able to have answers for that. Just tell them, be honest, say um, that you genuinely care about people. You understand that people, when they go out to eat, it's a special occasion for the most part, and um, or normally, and you, you're getting together with friends, it's a special time, so you don't want to ruin that on them. Uh, you want to make friends, you want to make sure that the customers, or guests, I suppose is the proper term, um, want to become regulars, like, yeah. Be open with people. Um, try to stay focused, that's something that I really struggle with. <laughs> um, you want to be like a few steps ahead of yourself at all times. So, like, even if it's slow and you're like, okay, I got this under control, um, in like 15 minutes it could be packed in there and you could be just like, what is going on? Section checks are so important. Anytime you go out, if you have a few tables, um, you want to make sure their drinks are all refilled at all times. You want to make sure that if you're going to check on one table as you leave, you're looking around at the other tables, making sure to get rid of any clutter on the tables. Presets are something I always get in trouble for with my serving jobs. Um, <laughs> so if somebody orders a steak, make sure you get them a steak knife. If somebody orders um, uh, a walk of some sort, make sure you bring out chopsticks. If people have you running around doing a hundred different things and you can't say no, um, you always just have to keep in mind that you have to greet a table um, pretty much right away, like ideally within uh, the first 30 seconds that they sit down. Or, um, yeah, you'll probably get in a lot of trouble even if you were putting out a fire. My manager at a restaurant I used to work at told me one time that uh, whenever you're talking to a table, you imagine that it's just you and these people and nobody else is there and then when you leave you imagine that you're leaving them through an imaginary door and closing it behind you <laughs> which sounds ridiculous but it actually helps because when you're at a table like you just want to think about like when you're a guest what you notice about servers and what kind of um, makes you happy to see them do and uh, it's good to be devoted to your guests. So I guess he just means like making sure whenever you're talking to them um, or even whenever you're done talking to them and you're leaving, you're not looking around at other tables, you're just focused on them because it does come across. People are mind readers. Like if I had it my way, I would just leave the people alone because I know how annoying it is whenever you're trying to have a conversation and the server just keeps popping out of nowhere um, but unfortunately there are rules and at a lot of the restaurants I've found um, that I've worked at uh, you really need to be annoying um, it's kind of part of the rules so you have to, even if you just barely dropped off the food, like a few, like a minute later or something, um, you're gonna have to go back and ask them how it is. And when you ask them how their food is, you don't wanna be, um, you don't wanna be saying how is everything. You don't wanna have general inquiries like that or just broad, foggy, You just, you don't want to be vague with them because that shows that you're not genuinely interested in the quality of their experience. So you want to, like if somebody's having a salad and the other person is having hot wings, you want to go over and say, are those too hot? How are you doing? How is your Greek salad? Make sure you say what it is. So thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I hope and some of this was helpful even a little bit. Uh, yeah, makeup and everything helps. That's all great, but um, you need to be you need to feel good about yourself going in there. You need to have confidence and exude that.